Hi students. So let's finish act four of Romeo and Juliet today. You may recall that last scene ended with Juliet's father moving up the day of the wedding to one day in advance. So Juliet has to make her decision tonight if she wants to go through with the whole Friar Lawrence's plan or not. Um, and so we're transitioning into now Juliet and the nurse are in her room together. So this is act four, scene three. Um, they're in Juliet's room and Juliet just kind of casually asks her to leave. Um, and then her mom comes in a little later and she asks her mom to leave too and kind of let me alone, you know. Um, so Juliet's alone in her room and she holds that potion in the vial that Friar Lawrence gave. Um, she holds the, the mixture that Friar Lawrence has given her that will make her comatose, essentially. And she thinks about Friar Lawrence's instructions for her and she thinks about her wedding day tomorrow. She's kind of nervous. Friar Lawrence said this will work as long as you're not nervous if you don't chicken out right. So she's kind of trying to have faith in that but she is fearful um, and kind of rightfully so. She doesn't know if this happens and she gets put in a tomb next time she wakes up. Her next waking moment will be in a catacomb fortunately near Romeo but she doesn't know when or if she'll ever see her beloved nurse again, if she'll ever see her mom again. So she shoes them out and that might be her last interaction action that she ever has with them if Friar Lawrence can't figure out some kind of plan to make the families forgive Romeo and Juliet for what they've done. Um, she also is kind of worried that the potion won't work at all so she'll drink it and then she'll end up waking up the next morning and she has to go through with the wedding and that she'll be married to someone who's not Juliet tomorrow. And so just in case, she decides, okay, well, this will end this as she puts a knife on the table next to her. So if she wakes up the next morning, um, she'll just finish herself off there. Um, so Julia is kind of at war with herself here. Is this reasonable behavior? Um, I think most would probably venture to say yes. She's acting kind of rationally. She's weighing all of her options and she's thinking about her family in a time that she's kind of been prioritizing herself and her relationship. But um, again, some might say, you know, she doesn't have a choice and that she, she should go through with this. Um, so Juliet is thinking to herself about all of these options, weighing them through, and she goes through this inner monologue. She's thinking, one person kind of alone talking to themselves, and she says this. So we're going to go through this uh, together. You will not have to annotate this one individually, but there will be something that you will have to annotate individually, but I'll make clear what that is. So if we're looking at this, Julia is, is talking about all of her options. She's kind of weighing all her options right now, Juliet is, and she's a little anxious about it. So she says, what if it be a poison, which the friar subtly hath ministered to have me dead, lest in this marriage he should be dishonored because he married me before to Romeo? I fear it is. And yet methinks it should not, for he hath still been tried a holy man, how if, when I'm laid into the tomb, I wait before the time that Romeo come to redeem me? There's a fearful point. Shall I then be stif Shall I not then be stifled in the vaults to whose foul mouth no healthsome air breathes in, and there die strangled ere my Romeo comes? Or, if I live, is it not very like the horrible conceit of death and night together with the terror of the place? As in a vault, an ancient receptacle where for this many hundred years the bones of all my buried ancestors are packed? Oh, if I wake, shall I not be distraught, environed with all these hideous fears? Romeo, 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 here's drink, I drink to thee. What is she saying? What options is she weighing? What is she thinking about? What is she fearful of? Let's break it down. So she starts by asking, what if it be a poison which the friar subtly hath ministered to have me dead? So what if the friar decided to give me a potion that was poisonous so I could really die? He sneakily gave it to me so I actually die. Bless this marriage, he, he would be dishonored because he married me before to Romeo. So this would get rid of me and Friar Lawrence's mistake in marrying me and Romeo, kind of to protect his reputation, right? So she's thinking, should I trust Friar Lawrence? I mean, he's got a lot to lose here. People would stop thinking of him as a good person or a good priest if they found out that he did this thing that caused so many complications and made everyone really unhappy. She says, I fear that it is that way. But then she contradicts herself and says, but yeah, me thinks it should not. 
So then she's like, well, maybe, I mean, probably not, for he hath still been tried a holy man. So she admits she's afraid, but she thinks she's wrong because he's religious and a holy man. So she's like, he would never do that because he's a religious holy man. How if, when I'm laid into the tomb, I wake before the time that Romeo come to redeem me? So this is a different concern. This first concern is that it's poison and that she's going to die. And now she's nervous that when she awakens, if she wakes up, um, what would she do if Romeo wasn't there yet? What if I wake up before I get to the tomb with Romeo to come redeem me? That's a fearful point. She's nervous about that. Shall I not then be stifled in the vault to whose foul mouth no healthsome air breathes in? So then won't I stifle myself? Won't I suffocate? Won't the air kill me because there's no healthy air in there and die strangled ere my Romeo, ear before my Romeo comes? So the stale air of those vaults might suffocate me or kill me if I awaken too early. Think about for coughing because of the niter in the vaults down in the catacombs in the Casco of Montiato. If you remember that, that's what she's going to be struggling with and dealing with if she wakes up too early. Or if I live, is it not very like the horrible conceit of death and night together with the terror of the place as in a vault, an ancient receptacle where this many hundred um, years the bones of all my buried ancestors are packed? So a lot she's describing here, the imagery, the conceit of death and night, the terror of the place in the vault. She's afraid she'll wake up and be kind of scared about what's around her of the dead. She'll be terrified at, at the dead around her and um, all of her ancestors pack there and um, in this kind of dot 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 ellipses here where more text is. Um, she's talking about being afraid that they'll haunt her and Tybalt's spirit will try to take revenge for the injustice that was committed against him of dying. Um, so she's kind of nervous. She's a little superstitious. She says, oh, if I wake, shall I not be distraught, environed with all of these hideous fears? So surrounded, um, environed, surrounded um, by all these hideous fears. So she'll just be simply terrified when she wakes up. In the end, though, she decides, whatever, I'm just going to do it. I, I need to do this. This is my only way out. And she calls to Romeo and says, Romeo, 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 here's drink. I drink to thee. So she kind of cheers <laughs> and then drinks um, in his memory for him. She drinks the potion. She throws all of her worries and cautions aside and goes, I'm just going to do it. And she ends up um, falling backwards on her bed. And that's it. That's, that's where the scene ends. So it leaves us kind of asking some questions here. Here's her drinking the potion in, in one uh, theatrical interpretation. Was this a character forming moment for Juliet? She's finally taking matters into her own hands, right? Showing bravery, claiming power over the situation that she's in. Or do you think that this was the wrong thing to do? Was it foolish or impulsive or childish? Is it selfish? Is she only thinking of herself? Or like I said, is she showing kind of bravery and a type of kind of power over the people who are trying to force her to do things she doesn't want to do? So ideas, what do you think there? Just questions to think about. Um, how might her family react to something like this? Will doing this, will her action here, do you think it will do more harm than good? And finally, is Juliet being selfish in this, not caring how this might affect her parents? Or is she just reacting to the selfishness of her parents planning this wedding without asking her input? So is she being selfish reacting to selfishness or is she just simply being selfish for the sake of she's a 13 year old child who thinks that she wants one thing? Um, so again, there's no wrong answers. Just think about them. It's just food for thought and maybe these will come up again later today. <laughs> Um, that brings us into scene four. So this is act four, scene four. And this is the shortest scene in the play. Not a lot happens. It's basically preparations are happening for the wedding. If we read this in class, sometimes I just give a summary of it because it's not worth reading. Um, preparations are happening for the wedding. The servants are speaking. They're being directed and ordered around. Mr. Capulet orders, Juliet must be awoken, right? It's the day of the wedding. Go fetch her. And just kind of what is that dramatic irony of the scene of Mr. Capulet asking this question. If we remember from when we read Lamb to the Slaughter and several other things, we talked about irony and we talked about the dramatic irony is the audience knows one thing that the characters don't know. What is that dramatic irony in this situation? Bringing us to act four, scene five, the last scene of act four. Nurse goes into Juliet's room to fetch her. So this takes place in Juliet's room and she starts teasing her, you know, it's your wedding day, get up, what are you waiting for, blah, 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 pulls back the curtains on Juliet's bed and finds 
Juliet dead, right? Or she finds her at least cold and appearing dead. We know, again, dramatic irony, that she's not truly dead, but her family doesn't. So in a panic, she starts calling, like, Capulets, Mr. and Mrs. Capulet, like, come in. And her parents come in, and they freak out as well. They're horrified. They start grieving. And they seem truly heartbroken about this. They're very distressed. I mean, this is their only daughter that's um, being, you know, that's dead in front of them. So I don't know, just to food for thought, would their, does their reaction kind of change your opinion of them? I know a lot of you from your questions the other day thought that Mr. Capulet was fairly heartless and didn't really like him or support him after his, you know, threats to Juliet before. Um, might this change your opinions of them at all? Or maybe not, you know, totally your opinion. Um, I do have a, it's a very powerful scene, the scene in the play, and I do have the YouTube video for it that we can watch, kind of like we watched that scene, um, of the fight scene. I'll only show you about two, two and a half minutes of this scene, just because that's kind of all you need to see the horror of the situation, but it is, um, a very gut-wrenching scene, so you could just prepare yourself for what you might see here, because it's very sad. Distress. Distress. Juliet. Last I warned her, she, my love, my lady, why you slug of it, my love, I say, madam, madam, sweetheart, right, but not a word, leave for a week, you take your penny words now, and the next night I warned the county parlous had set up his rest, but you shall rest but little. <laughs> Like I said, a dramatic scene for sure and a sad one. Her parents are genuinely affected by this and this is something that is permanent, right? They think is permanent at least and is it right to kind of toy with their emotions like this? I mean, for her own sake, they were going to force her to do something that she truly did not want to do, but is this the way that you react to it? Is this the only way that she could react to it as a woman in this society? So food for thought. Um, eventually, Friar Lawrence and Paris enter the scene. So they come up and Paris is like, what's all like the hold up up here? I'm waiting to get married. And Friar Lawrence is waiting down downstairs to marry the two of them. Um, and they figure out what happened and everyone's upset in, in general. But Friar Lawrence, he knows the truth, right? So he's trying to offer some comfort um, to Mr. Capulet, but horrified, Mr. Capulet says this. And this is going to be something that I'm going to ask you to interpret on your own on the Google form. All things that we ordained festival turn from their office to black funeral. Our instruments to melancholy bells, our wedding cheer to a sad burial feast, our solemn hymns to sullen dirges change, our bridal flowers serve for a buried course, and all things change them to the contrary. 
that leaves us with the end of act four, scene five. Friar Lawrence prompts them to get Juliet into the grave quickly. He goes, look, there's not much we can do. We can grieve all we want, but we got to get her into her tomb, into her grave, pay her her respects. The nurse, um, to end this scene, wants the musicians to play some fitting music for the occasion, which is, um, you know, funeral music, but they kind of chat about how they want to play a certain type of music, and it's supposed to be a strange kind of comic relief to the end of the end of the act, but um, it also shows us that the servants really don't care about this tragedy as much as everybody else does. I mean, they don't know Juliet at all. They're just worried if they're still going to get paid or not going to get food anymore now that they're um, playing at a funeral and not a wedding. So just sort of an interesting way to end the, the scene, looking at the different classes and looking at that some people, even though this might seem like their world, aren't affected by something that seems so huge to somebody else. Um, two questions to end us off. Would you consider Juliet and the Friars plan a success at this point? So far, has it worked exactly the way they'd like it to? Um, and just a kind of ethical question, something that might have been like a do now question if we had talked about this um, in a debate. Would you ever or could you ever forgive a family member for faking their own death like this? Um, even under circumstances such as these. So we know that obviously Juliet was in a really tough place. Um, could you, as her parents or as the nurse, ever forgive her for this? And that leads us to the curtain closing on Act 4 of Romeo and Juliet. Tomorrow we'll read the first half of Act 5, and then we will finish the rest of Act 5 on Thursday. Therefore, we will finish Romeo and Juliet by Thursday, so all of next week we can work on writing an essay as part of your assignment. And then that means that we would just have one academic week where we could kind of finish the essay and just relax and do some nice, easy, low stakes assignments. So information on that to come. More on act five tomorrow, our final act of Romeo and Juliet. And for now, let's talk about what I want you to do for your Google form assignment for today. You know where to find this. It'll be in the description of the video. So here we are on Tuesday, May 12th assignment. Write your name and similar to last week, I'm just curious in your opinion, what was the most surprising, dramatic or interesting scene of act four um, in your opinion? So which scene did you like the most? Scenes one through five are here. Choose one of them and then just explain your answer to the question. I liked scene one because I found it interesting when Friar Lawrence came up with his plan or something like that. So whatever you choose. Um, do you think it's reasonable that Juliet is so hesitant about whether to drink the vial or not? Um, are her concerns valid? Explain. So in your opinion, based on what she was kind of debating over, should she have been debating? Is that a reasonable thing for her to be nervous about? Um, what do you think about Juliet's decision to take the poison? Was this a character forming moment for her? Was this, you know, showing bravery and claiming power? Or do you think it was the wrong thing to do? Was it foolish, impulsive, childish? Explain your thoughts. Two to three full sentences. Do you think that Juliet is being selfish, not caring about how this might affect her parents? Or is she just reacting to the selfishness of her parents planning this wedding without her input? Explain. Only one to two sentences needed there. We've talked a lot about irony this year. Um, what is that dramatic irony in Act 4, Scene 4? Just be clear about it. Did the reaction of Juliet's parents to her death change your opinion of them at all? So this, I guess, would be for the students that really hated the parents after last week in um, Act 3, Scene 5, when Mr. Capulet forced her into marriage, essentially, by threatening to kick her out on the streets um, and hit her. Does this change your reaction or your opinion of the parents at all? Um, and now reread the set of lines for Mr. Capulet again. This is going to be what you're, like you did yesterday, annotating bit by bit, line by line. All things that we ordain festival turn from their office to black funeral. Our instruments are um, our instruments to melancholy bells, our wedding cheer to sad burial feast, our solemn hymns to sullen dirges change, our bridal flowers serve for a varied course, and all things change to them, them to the contrary. So attempt to annotate this, putting it into modern day language modeled like I have been doing it for the past few days and like you did yesterday. If you have to look up some words, you might have to do that. And don't worry if it's not perfect. Again, just like yesterday, I encourage you just do your best on it. What do you think? All things that we ordain festival turn from their office to black funeral, our instruments to melancholy bells, our wedding cheer to a sad burial feast. Our solemn hymns to solemn dirges change, our bridal flowers serve for a buried course, and all things change them to the contrary. Um, two questions left here at the end. Would you consider Juliet and the Friars plan a success? 
why or why not, one or two full sentences is fine, and could you or would you ever forgive a, care, a family member for faking their own death, even under circumstances such as these? Explain. Finally, I acknowledge that I will receive an extra copy of today's notes via email. So this is today and yesterday's notes. Um, if I have any questions, comments, concerns about the today's material, I can reach out to Ms. Duquette. So talk to me if you're curious or um, confused about the story at all. But we're just going to dive right into the end of it tomorrow. So we will see the dramatic and exciting conclusion to Romeo and Juliet tomorrow. Enjoy your day, guys. Any questions, comments, concerns, let me know. Uh, you know how to reach me, and I hope you all have a nice day. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.